welcome to another episode of Kotlin Internals Interview Crashcasts. I'm your host, Sheila, and today we're diving into a common interview question for senior back-end engineers working with Kotlin. Joining us is Victor, an experienced Kotlin developer. Victor, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Sheila. I'm excited to share my knowledge with the listeners. Great. Let's jump right in. Victor, here's the interview question. Explain the concept of extension functions in Kotlin and provide an example. Can you start by giving us a basic explanation of what extension functions are? Certainly, Sheila. Extension functions are a powerful feature in Kotlin that allows developers to add new functions to existing classes without modifying their source code. Essentially, it's a way to extend a class with new functionality without inheriting from it or using complex design patterns. That sounds useful. Can you break down how we actually declare an extension function? Of course. To declare an extension function, you start with the name of the class you want to extend, followed by a dot and then the name of your new function. Inside the function, you can use this to refer to the instance of the class you're extending. For example, imagine we want to add a function to the string class that adds an exclamation mark at the end. I see. So how would we actually use this extension function? Using it is straightforward. Once the extension function is defined, you can call it on any instance of the class as if it were a regular member function. In our example, you could take any string and call this new function to add an exclamation mark to it. That's really interesting. Can you explain a bit more about how this works internally? How does Kotlin make this possible? Certainly. Internally, Kotlin compiles extension functions into static methods. The receiver object, that's the instance of the class you're extending, becomes the first parameter of this static method. This is why extension functions can access public members of the receiver object, but not private or protected members. I see. So what are some of the benefits of using extension functions over traditional utility methods? Great question. There are several benefits. First, they offer better readability and discoverability. Extension functions appear as suggestions in IDE auto-completion, making them easier to find and use. Second, the compiler can check that you're calling the extension function on the correct type. Third, you can add functionality to classes that are marked as final in Java. And lastly, you have more control over namespaces, helping to avoid naming conflicts. Additionally, extension functions can lead to more expressive and fluent APIs. Those are some compelling advantages. Can you compare this approach to how you might achieve similar functionality in Java? In Java, you typically create utility classes with static methods to achieve similar functionality. You'd have a separate class with static methods that take the object as a parameter. The Kotlin approach with extension functions is generally more concise and allows for a more natural, object-oriented style of calling these utility functions. That's a clear difference. Now, let's dive a bit deeper. Are there any advanced uses of extension functions that a senior engineer should be aware of? Absolutely. Two advanced topics worth mentioning are extension functions on companion objects and nullable receivers. For companion objects, you can define extension functions that appear to be static members of a class. As for nullable receivers, you can define extension functions that can be called on nullable types. This allows you to safely call functions on potentially null objects. Those are some powerful capabilities. Are there any edge cases or limitations with extension functions that developers should be aware of? Yes, there are a few important points to keep in mind. First, extension functions can't access private or protected members of the receiver class. Second, they don't actually modify the class they're extending. They can't add new properties or override existing methods. Third, if there's a name conflict between an extension function and a member function, the member function always takes precedence. Lastly, extension functions are resolved statically, so they don't support polymorphic behavior like virtual methods do. It's important to use extension functions judiciously and not overuse them, as they can sometimes make code harder to understand if used excessively. Thank you, Victor. That's a comprehensive overview of extension functions in Kotlin. To wrap up, could you summarize the key points we've covered today? Certainly, Sheila. 
here's a summary of what we've discussed. 1. Extension functions allow adding new functions to existing classes without modifying their source code. 2. They're declared using a special syntax that looks like a function with a receiver. 3. Internally, they're compiled to static methods with the receiver as the first parameter. 4. Benefits include improved readability, type checking, and the ability to extend final classes. 5. They offer advantages over traditional Java utility methods in terms of discoverability and syntax. 6. Advanced uses include extending companion objects and working with nullable receivers. 7. There are some limitations, such as not being able to access private members or override existing methods. Extension functions are a powerful Kotlin feature that, when used appropriately, can lead to more expressive and maintainable code. Excellent summary, Victor. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us today. To our listeners, I hope this discussion has deepened your understanding of Kotlin's extension functions and helps you in your interview preparation. Until next time, this is Sheila signing off from Kotlin Internals Interview Crashcasts.